Greetings, dear friends. Virgo Festival greetings to all of us. Thank you for joining the Awakening the Souls of Our Nation's Creative Lab, organized in cooperation of the 2025 initiative with the Hikal Group from Jerusalem and Klanschale Group from Germany. We continue our work in our first season of the Creative Lab. Thank you for your continuous presence and uh, love and light that you ready into the circle. Over to you, Uta. Thank you, Alexander. Hello, everyone. In our Creative Nations Lab, we come together every month to practice planetary eldership which means practicing together to oversee the affairs of the family of nations and training the skills which may be required for members of a soul guided united nations sometime in the future In previous sessions, in the last few sessions, we have started to look at the field of relationships between nations, not at the nations themselves, but what the, the, the relationships between. And in last month's session in Leo, we have worked with deepening our telepathic sensitivity. So today we will use it, we will build on it, stretching our psychic senses to look at a very large field of relationships within humanity and one that uh, perhaps not all of us are familiar here in the nation's lab breaks the alliance of developing nations. So for this expansion of our awareness here, let us prepare, go into our safe and soul guided space, our council chamber of elders in training. And after that, will invite bricks into our consciousness as a group. Okay, so just let us prepare the space. Withdraw the attention into our own inner stillness. Breathing. Grounding. And being calmly present as a soul in incarnation. Taking now our position on a pinnacle, overlooking our nation, standing midway between its soul and its outer life. Taking a moment to connect with it, Feeling the love for our nation. And also our freedom from it. If 
Fine tuning now our vibration, assuming the role of an elder for the family of nations as a whole. Taking a moment to widen our heart to an all embracing will to love. and making our minds as inclusive as we can. Aspiring to a planetary perspective. And we dedicate ourselves in service to humanity. Letting ourselves be drawn to the beautiful building set in nature, which we already know by now. Entering into the quiet and clear and spacious chamber. Taking our places in geometric order. Sensing the atmosphere in the chamber, the geometrical harmony. Becoming aware of each other's presence in the circle. And of the space we together hold. In the center of the chamber, visualize the flame of our combined, sustained will to love. And align our hearts to it. the will to right relations that brings us together here. And now gently bringing our minds into consonance. Sensing the mental field synchronizing. Gradually. Until it is a calm, stable, telepathic membrane. We notice the presence of high Deva beings helping us to hold this space. Holding it stable. And aligning with our fellow world workers in all nations as the Ajna center of the planet.
we invoke the presence of our co-workers in the ashram who guide and support our nation's work. Holding this alignment for another moment, making it stable. And we are ready to begin our work. Lowering a bit our focus. And open our eyes. And let us invite now into our council chamber, into our group awareness, Briggs. This huge field of relationships For those, those of us who are not so familiar with BRICS, let's have a brief overview before we take it into meditation. Can we have the map? Thank you. So let's have a look at this map. In red color, we have the five founders of BRICS. And the blue is the six newly accepted members. Let us first focus on the founders, <clears throat> just being for a moment with each of these nations, just to get a feel for them. Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. BRICS has originally been founded by the triangle of Russia, India, and China. Just get a sense of this triangle for a moment. And then later, Brazil and South Africa have been added. And um, BRICS just last week had their 15th summit in which six additional member nations have been admitted with effect of January next year. Let's be also again with each one of these for a moment. Argentina. Ethiopia, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and 
United Arab Emirates. And Iran. These nations together make up 46% of the world population. And 36% of the land mass. Together they comprise the richest resources of energy and metals and also much of the world's agricultural produce and manufacturing power. And in the coming years, there will be more nations joining, which have already asked for admission. So far, it's somewhere around 40, maybe already more waiting from South America, Africa, Asia, and Oceania. Let's get a sense of what BRICS says about itself. So I would like to share part of the introductory passage from this very detailed Johannesburg Declaration which was issued at the end of their recent summit. Can we have the text of these? Um, yeah. We'll read it out. We reaffirm our commitment to the BRICS spirit of mutual respect and understanding sovereign equality, solidarity, democracy, openness, inclusiveness, strengthened collaboration, and consensus. As we build upon 15 years of BRICS summits, we further commit ourselves to the three pillars of political and security, economic and financial, and cultural and people-to-people -people cooperation, and to the promotion of peace, a more representative, fairer international order, a reinvigorated and reformed multilateral system, sustainable development and inclusive growth. We reiterate our commitment to inclusive multilateralism and upholding international law, including the purposes and principles enshrined in the Charter of the United Nations as its indispensable cornerstone and the central role of the UN in an international system in which sovereign states cooperate based on the spirit of solidarity, mutual respect, justice, and equality. Let's go back for a bit to the map. So their goal is the advancement and independence of the developing and the poorer nations and their fuller integration into the international order. They commit to help each other, to help each other develop while preserving the sovereignty of each member nation and respecting 
the different political systems and ideologies not interfering. And throughout this long declaration, they reiterate again and again that they are not in competition with anyone and they are not an exclusive club. Their scope is a just world for all. They call for a reform of the UN and other international organizations to the, with the goal to become more inclusive of the developing and the poorer nations and their interests. So, let us take this intention of BRICS into meditation. Shall we have the, the pinnacles picture, please? Um, So this is a first snapshot of BRICS. And it's first of all, to make ourselves aware of its existence. And then to look if we can find, to, to probe into its potential as a possible next step in international cooperation. And of course, we are all aware of the many challenges of this new experiment. And uh, it may well turn out to be more of the same game of competition and dominance. But in this meditation, let us look for, for the possible new, for possible seeds of the new age. What kind of governance principles are they trying out here? What kind of a network are they trying to build? And what, what could we envision as a possible achievement for humanity as a whole? So for us in the council chamber, this will be quite a stretch now to observe such a large relational field and also one that is uh, less familiar to us, that is outside of our Western world. Yeah, so let us keep in mind, like we always do with the first snapshot, it's just a first look. We don't need to strain too much to get a comprehensive uh, view. It's just really a first, first look. And whenever it becomes too strenuous, we can just breathe and recenter in the council chamber and uh, go back into the higher alignment. Um, yeah. Okay. So let us reconvene in our council chamber. Let's settle into this spacious and clear atmosphere in each other's presence. And in the presence of our elders in the higher worlds.
And from this observation point, let us look down at our planet. See, like from above, the continents, Europe, Asia, Oceania, Africa, America. And see humanity spread out over these continents, ordered into nations. And now within this international field, let us locate, let us zoom in into the founding nations of BRICS, beginning with Brazil in South America, and Russia, connecting Europe and Asia, to India in Asia, and also China in Asia, and South Africa at the southern tip of the of Africa. From our council chamber, let us get a, a sense of this vast global relational field. Get a sense of the tension between these very different cultures, ideologies, interests, and visions. And see now what holds them together. What are they doing together, trying to do? Can we perhaps perceive a shared soul-guided impulse underlying this experiment. And let us now visualize the integration of the six new members into the BRICS alliance. Argentina, Ethiopia, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates 
and Iran. Let us just get a general sense of 40 more nations waiting to join this movement from Africa, South America, Asia and Oceania. Now, let us sense the field of the Western world in relation to this growing alliance. As we hold this big picture, let us be focused in the council chamber, in each other's presence and within the aura of our ashrami co-workers, just breathing and holding it. Let us endeavor to see this BRICS alliance within the whole field of humanity, endeavoring to see it as hierarchy sees it, in its present form and in its potential. Let's give this about two minutes of observation.
And let us gently release now the observation and bring our focus back into the council chamber, taking another moment in each other's presence to reaffirm our group of elders in training, And let us now return to our own personal field, to ourselves. Taking a moment to just let the impression settle and listening also to our feelings, whatever they are, giving some space to them. When we're ready, just grounding back into the physical, opening our eyes, and perhaps taking a couple of minutes to note down any impressions. So let us open the floor now for our sharing. Keeping the meditative attitude. Seeing if we can be brief but full as DK advises. Yeah, just raise your hand your digital hand when you're ready to share. This is Margot from Canada. 
with the founding nations, the impulse to synthesize, with the new additions, adding harmonics, with the potential 40, breathing new life. Resistance initially from the Western nations, yet intrigued as well, interested. From hierarchy coming into synthetic balance and an image of the yin yang symbol then all images disappeared in clear, cold light with a feeling of calm, open brightness. Hello, this is Helen from Israel. I'm so um, thankful um, for this acknowledgement. I can breathe in uh, this acknowledgement of countries and nations that are part of our world. Um, and that express this part of the world that expresses itself in languages on all levels, not only phonetically, that are written in letters that are founded upon other roots than Latin and Slavic. And seeing from the council chamber perspective, I could see the whole planet acknowledged. And I could breathe into it. Because uh, coming from this part of the world that now uh, is uh, kind of uh, named in this community. Um, it's a personal feeling and I can breathe. perspective is um, kind of uh, widening and integrating. Yeah, I'm through. This is Deborah from the US. This is my first real contemplation into bricks. I've not really turned my attention to it before. I found myself very curious, curious to learn who were the leaders and inspirers of the founding of BRICS? What was the initiating impulse and source of inspiration? That seems, you know, very important to me in terms of what was its spiritual or first ray um, formulation of purpose. 
around which it will attract membership and initiate activity. Um, how do these founders, it, to me, it seems the most promise in my heart, I feel, at first look, really, the most promise that such an alliance could bring forward is advocating truly for the, the voice of the, the indigenous peoples represented in those national configurations. If the people in their dreams and aspirations and practical and spiritual needs are the first consideration, then I, I would see BRICS as a, a real stepping stone for the Aquarian era. Um, On the on the other side of the spectrum, I mean, I have concern that many of the nations are very heavy in their commitment to continuing production of oil as a central e economic driver. Um, and as in many countries in the West, they're struggling with authoritarianism, just like we are here in the US having a very big struggle with that. Um, so looking to that, the constructs in the West are, are crumbling, just no doubt about it, and clamoring for the new. And there's quite a bit of clamor in BRICS countries as well. So I see opportunity in you know, the holding of purpose to synthesize BRICS and the Western uh, alliances into, into a higher repurposed um, vision, modality, creativity um, along along Aquarian lines. And I think one of the big keys to that is if all nations came together with the commitment to release uh, to the world the already extant free energy systems, quantum vacuum, zero point, call it what you will, uh, free energy, yeah, that if free energy were freely released to all peoples, then that would, sorry to use this term, be a trump card <laughs> uh, for old kinds of uh, consolidations of of power and control over the people. So those were my thoughts. Hi, Eva Smith here from Toronto, Canada. 
just to respond to the last person that spoke, I watched a video last night that talked about, it wasn't very long, talked about the origins of bricks and that it started through Goldman Sachs coining that expression. And it did include this, the five original countries. And the other thing that was said, which we have not touched upon, is that in trading and with the monetary system, the United States is not going to be that upset that its dollar is not going to be the fiat dollar of the world anymore because it's part of the plan and that they are aware of it. How much validity there is to this information, I don't know. Now to respond to my experience in the meditation. I guess I was very futuristic in the way I saw the cooperation of all of these nations and countries and the fact that they are going to be working in harmony with respect to one another and their culture without competition. So I saw lines of light linking all these countries, overlapping lines, almost creating a grid around the earth. Um, with, of course, North America and South America not covered at all, but the rest of the world uh, very much uh, interconnected. And I felt, I felt very positive about the potential of the integration and um, coherence that this might bring about in the future in the Aquarian age. I guess I guess that's about it. I'd like to share um, three impressions from the meditation. This is Alexander. First, there is a sole impulse behind this initiative, which was somewhat surprising for me to recognize that. It's a sole impulse for that expresses as the pursuit for sovereignty and the value uh, of sovereignty of each individual uh, nation state. Second, it's a uh, materialistically driven alliance, driven by materialistic interests of the countries involved, of the uh, governments of these countries. Uh, main uh, driving uh, motivation is economic prosperity uh, and uh, economical gain. And third, that it's um, ex the uh, BRICS alliance is an expression of the China-centric world, which whose interests economic dominance interests underline creation of um, this block, but also we can see it in the economic, global economic expansion policies within the last several decades. Over.
Hello everyone, this is Andrea. I just want to communicate the vision that I saw in the meditation, and that was a six-pointed star. And when I looked closely at it, it was the fusion of two triangles, um, one being the United States and Russia and Great Britain, a triangle that we know very well. And the other was a triangle of China and Brazil and India which for me is new. Um, I always wonder in our global work about these other very strong and powerful and important nations that are on our earth and that they are not necessarily acknowledged in the way that Russia and the United States and Great Britain are. And so I saw these two triangles fuse into a six-pointed star and somewhat like Alexander with his suggestion of a soul impulse, it was for me more of a Christed impulse. It was looking at that six pointed stars, the merging of opposites of the merging of duality and in a sense, the union of heaven and earth coming together and maybe even the integration of the masculine and the feminine. But that six pointed star held an importance that was unified. Thank you. Uh, it's Denis from Russia, and uh, I want to say that uh, it's uh, it's upset that uh, not uh, so many people uh, in the West don't see the uh, so called of this unity and uh, think that the, this is unity is materialistic and china centric but uh, there are uh, many voices uh, uh, that just say that this unity is the future of humanity and uh, i rather should agree with them and uh, as it has been said, uh, uh, BRICS, by its existence, shows that relations between nations can be uh, defined by the principle of equality and multilateralism. And uh, thus, the uh, unique quality of Russia is that um, it is able to find common ground between nations and uh, to find unifying rather than divisive. There are many examples of this. And um, Russia's soul many times in history drives it to the selflessly helped other nation, other nations and uh, for all this, for benefit of all humanity. This fact is truly worth reflecting on. Really, I think so. Um, the world today is moving from the form of antagonism and rivalry to the form of cooperation, and we see it. And uh, this is the energy of the new age. And uh, we can touch to, to this energy. And uh, I think that uh, this energy must replace the selfish tendencies of today's world order, in which there is the dictate of one nation for the benefit of the interests of a narrow group of nations. 
The entire world order of today is subordinated to this very thing. Uh, many of us should also realize this fact, because living inside this world order is it is very difficult to see its essence. Uh, the, I think that the vertical structure of the world order in the uh, age of pieces is always easier to maintain than to build horizontal links. It is always easier to trust the boss and let him think how we should live. But today the age of Aquarius enters the arena of manifestation. The same ray increases its influence and displaces the energy of the sixth ray clinging to life. The world has changed. Of course, horizontal connections are very difficult to create. We all know this from our own life. But there's the ones, horizontal, respectful, and sovereign relations is the future of humanity. Russia has shown humanity an example that the world can be different and that it is possible to free oneself from the dictate of hegemon, that there is no need to be afraid. As a result, a friendly family has already formed in the world, which will be able to take into its home all those who want to live in a new free world. And this family is called the BRICS. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, <clears throat> for your wisdom. <clears throat> this is Martha from North, North America. <clears throat> uh, during the meditation, it uh, came to me that hierarchy is really listening to this experiment. And from my uh, understanding, as much as I have at this time, I was thinking as to how it is uh, truly an international experiment that in short order will have closed some of the irreparable gaps that came about um, as the United, uh, United Nations was developing. One is North-South divisions. And that the other was truly the, the wealthy versus the marginalized. And one of the huge insoluble problems uh, that the United Nations has brought out was how dues are paid. There are dues and those who pay the most uh, have the most access. And so there are many challenges that um, perhaps the countries have learned um, because all of these countries are very active and engaged um, it, it, the one of the I, I would say from my understanding that China is the least transparent in the workings at the United Nations. But uh, the other countries that I know about, I have had 25 years 
uh, as an NGO rep at the UN. The other countries have interesting angles that um, there's an opportunity for those nuances, those angles, as someone earlier said, such different cultures that need to be brought to the table and were never ever considered when the United Nations began. So it's, I'm going to sit with this fundamental sense hierarchy is listening and reminding myself that these great experience experiments have an awful lot to do with humanity that it really is humanity's job to bring to hierarchy the best of what we can do in order for those higher beings to know how to adapt and adjust the approaches that are needed so i want to thank the organizers for bringing up this big experiment <clears throat> at the same time i'm hoping that we don't become too idealistic about it or expect too much from it um, I think the six-pointed star that was suggested by one Andrea was um, well placed in that it's bringing in a different kind of energy. Um, I think also the dilemma here is that, from my understanding, BRICS is built upon the most egregious a separative system that we have, which is the economic system. And that wasn't considered when the United Nations was formed. The United Nations was attempting to bring together uh, countries who were at war. And so the focus was governmental and political. As I understand it, BRICS is based on working out to it to create a fairer more just um, economic system which is embedded in materialism and yet i don't necessarily believe that's a disqualifying factor here given where we are in the world today and what we uh, long for um, and it, it, it is definitely a coalition that would be needed to uh, um, address the problems brought largely through the IMF and the World Bank. So, so it my mess. My thought is it's really time to listen. It's it's if if humanity if we are the ones that um want to put the spotlight on the best of this great experiment then it, it probably is up to us to to learn to learn more to register how it is that we may bring out the best in the effort uh, it, it's when these kinds of great uh, innovation experiments happen, I don't know that it's ours to say whether we're for or against. It seems to us, uh, as Dennis pointed out, that it's probably the best thing to do is to look into those, our own countries, and to say, how can we contribute? How can we become some kind of a voice? that gives it a chance. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. As one that has been working in the UN for so long, um, I want to touch on this point that I am relieved that BRICS is 
putting the UN um, in such a central, giving such a central importance to the UN. And um, it seems it will surely be a, a, a great force to help the UN to reform. And um, yeah, to do the next step really on this um, this development of the UN being the the best hope for humanity. Um, I want to also link um, to what Deborah was saying. What is uh, the the founding impulse? Uh, of of uh, BRICS. This was also for me fascinating to hear that it was Russia, India, and China that first came together and brought uh, where, where is are ah, this this founding triangle and thinking that India and uh, China have this border dispute for so long and still they do together they found together this um this alliance with russia playing um um a glue <laughs> um a bringing together function here um i would like to read what uh, Sveta from Russia asked me to read out because uh, uh, the pronunciation in English is not yet so clear. I think the most interesting thing about BRICS is the principle of integration of integrations that Russia is promoting. It implies the integration into BRICS or cooperation with BRICS of other regional integration projects. Thus, there is a possibility of multi-level integration simultaneously in various spheres, taking into account regional peculiarities and natural, historical, religious, cultural, etc. ties. And what is also important is the possibility of leveling interstate conflicts, bringing them down to the level of regional associations and bringing into BRICS only that which unites. It really feels like new impulses here. Are there any people uh, from uh, nations that are part of BRICS who would maybe like to bring in your voices? There are several um, 
comments uh, that I reposted in the chat. Uh, you want me to read them? Please, yes. The first comment from Maria Cristina, a sense of beauty, a rich tapestry of cultures and perspectives. And the second comment from her, the possibility came to mind that perhaps China and Russia, as members of the Security Council, might broach the abolishment of the veto held by the law. Hmm. And there is also a comment from Diana. The souls of the five continents as one soul inspiring the oneness on the temporary label of bricks and changing to a new field of unified name unnamed yet. Denise, uh, could you perhaps share uh, what uh, you shared with me about China, with the spider? Oh, uh, yes, I. Uh, thank you. I uh, probably uh, better write it uh, down and we all can read it and Sasha will uh, sound it. Okay. Hmm. But we, we hear you well, Denise. You, uh, you, I think we can all um understand yeah. okay uh, uh, this is uh, not my thought but uh, Sveta uh, said about China and uh, maybe she would uh, tell us in Russian I will translate uh, <laughs> now just just a few seconds. Mm -hmm. It's a pity that we don't have anyone from China <laughs> in our lab. Yes, but uh, I think that uh, that will be not uh, uh, for forever. Mm -hmm. Let's put our um our visualization mm -hmm. on it to attract some chinese co-workers <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay i will i will read uh, Svetas, uh Svetas thought but uh, these uh, two computers are near. Uh, is sound is good? Meanwhile, yes. Okay. Uh, China, unlike Russia, gravitates towards the expansion model, where potential BRICS members are introduced into the aura of its body, and thus the process of pulling in of pulling in begins for china we know race uh, one uh, the, the first ray of soul and uh, third ray of personality uh, such a model of standing in the center uh, like spider you know and uh, constant expansion through the pulling of connecting threads is very organic, spider in the center, the, the third ray. But it scares the other BRICS members. At the last summit, a balance was stuck, uh, 
sorry, was uh, struck uh, with issue and expansion was limited and re reasonable. Over. <laughs> that is over, yeah. <laughs> It was uh, not very good pronunciation, <laughs> not very good reading, but... <clears throat> yeah, I yes. understood it. I hope that uh, others who have heard it for the first time have also understood it. Um, yeah, this balancing of China's uh, ambitions to, to enlarge based on its uh, third ray uh, quality, and the other members not uh, being scared for uh, by by this uh, quick enlargement and then uh, the the finding of a balance between all members. I think um, that uh, uh, yes. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yes. You, you didn't tend your phrase. Yeah. Uh, I think that China is. Uh, 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 the problem of uh, the whole world, uh, uh, this potential problem, and uh, um, and uh, the same is in in Greeks. But mm. the, there is a problem uh, that we can uh, uh, resolve. We can. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. China understand, I think, uh, that this is the problem, and I think that uh, it uh, will not allow itself to um, to behave uh, on the on its uh, uh, worst personality level. But uh, I think the South China will. Uh, drive him uh, uh, in the first place, and uh, the second will be personality. I think uh, mm -hmm. this problem will be dissolved in Briggs mm -hmm. and in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you also have the sense, or do the Briggs uh, uh, um, countries? Uh, have the sense that what Martha said that uh, China is the least transparent in the UN. And uh, it's really, it's difficult, I think it's difficult for Westerns to understand Chinese uh, character. Uh, uh, I think uh, the Chinese character is. Um, it it brought uh, much from Atlantic past, uh, some uh, so, something. Uh, if we remember that Chinese, uh, that China is the uh, the seventh uh, race of Atlantic uh, race. Uh, the seventh uh, sub race of Atlantic race. Mm -hmm. uh, we can understand maybe that this this was uh, the best of Atlantic race, but the Atlantic race is the past, and uh, now we live in future and uh, in, in present and uh, look. Uh, in future, and uh, this is uh, that uh, can bring some disconnection uh, with our understanding. And uh, but uh, I think that uh, the Chinese uh, do doesn't have uh, evil in uh, in his. Um, uh, vehicles hmm. uh, like some others it, uh, it is uh, very large and this is uh, the problem of it and uh, uh, like uh, elephant mm -hmm. <laughs> he is very large but he is not 
uh, it is not his fault mm -hmm. but everybody should do something with it and uh, uh, but uh, the first and third ray also uh, have some uh, um, influence of his character and we should uh, understand this that this mm -hmm. influence uh, it is basically basically mm -hmm. okay thank you yeah. thank you denise <laughs> yeah the jewish people also have the same ray makeup <laughs> um, uh, yes i i heard that um, um leoni you would like to share from south africa thank you Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Uta. Wonderful to hear the comments and impressions from the others and much appreciated. I'm um, not new to BRICS, as you can imagine. I am living in South Africa now for 40 years, so it's very much uh, been in my awareness. And for the last month or so, it has been an aspect of my own personal meditations for quite some time. Uh, I have experienced firsthand um, all the things that, you know, that are connected to it. And I can say that whilst it is a noble initiative, sadly, it is headed up at times by ignoble people. Um, I grew up in a country where the destabilization was brought about by the efforts of countries such as Russia and China. I was born in what was then Rhodesia. So I am approaching it as much as I wish for the beautiful positive things of this alliance to come into manifestation for all the people of these nations and for all of the earth, I have a somewhat guarded approach to it because of my own personal experiences. In the meditation, I was picturing the map of the earth and seeing the nations there, the red standing out quite strongly. And then also thinking about the six new nations which are coming on board. And if we look at BRICS as being a vehicle which can benefit developing nations, I personally have to ask the question, why are countries that are so extremely wealthy, such as Saudi Arabia and the UAE, coming into something like this. And as I was thinking of this, I could see the, the red extending over most of the earth and excluding the United States and that um, continent of America. And it felt to me, it touched me, let's put it that way. It made me feel quite um, concerned. Mm -hmm about where we're, where we're going and why, you know, I have to ask, why are these nations becoming bedfellows? Just mm -hmm. to give um, people who don't really, maybe don't know, the mineral wealth of the nation now known as Zimbabwe has been annexed and mines are owned mostly by Chinese companies at the moment. So, what is the interest? Is the interest in developing the nation and supporting the indigenous people of these, uh, especially these African countries, or is it to, um, to attach the wealth that is available in these countries? Um, yeah, I think further than that, I'm not going to speak. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Leonie, for bringing in this voice.
We soon need to come to a, to the end. Um, Alexander, could you read the the um, comment from Jonathan, please? Is there a comment from Jonathan and two comments from Philip? And before I start reading, I just also want to acknowledge that we have a representative of another new brick, newly bricked country, Argentina, in mm -hmm. our service. If Carlos would like to share anything, please. Uh, so here's the sharing from uh, Jonathan. A common realization will become evident that the oil economy has no future. Humanity and our planet really is facing a crisis. It's little time to birth a new soul awareness and make the transition from fossil fuel energy, driving a debt economy to a new supply and demand of energy at no cost in production. Sharing from Philip, first sharing, uh, it uh, from, comes from Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia says the BRIC alliance has its roots in Russia, India, China strategic triangle, which was envis uh, envisaged by Russian Prime Minister Evgeny Primakov in the 90s. Various sources refer to a purported uh, original BRIC agreement that predates the Goldman Sachs thesis. Some of these sources claim that President Putin of Russia was the driving force behind the original cooperative coalition of developing BRIC countries. BRICS appears to be based upon two principles, the shifting of global power and economic issues, race one and three. Is there a secondary motive in BRICS for better relations? As Russia appears to be the main instigator, it could well be an expression of the seventh ray Aquarian soul. And the second comment from Philip, China has the most ancient origins in the Atlantis that go back to the third sub-race. The Tibetans are younger from the seventh sub-race of Atlantis. China's third ray personality derives from this third sub-race. Mm Yeah, is there anyone else that would like to share before we close? This is Deborah. Um, I would like to, to share something. Um, it's very clear that we need a clear group channel of utter clarity regarding the relationships, rheological relationships between the first, second, and seventh rays, that the purity of purpose is something that's been such a high vibration and frequency that it's been beyond the kin of humanity to embody. And I think that now as we transition into the Aquarian, we must invoke and evoke the utter purity of first ray and the magical properties of manifestation of the seventh ray and that flowing in consonance with the Christ, the, the utter manifestation of the second ray and that without that synthesis the forms that we create will be of the past. Mm -hmm. So, so um, I, 
I also want to share just uh, paraphrasing something that came from Master R that this particular time in human history is the first time ever that all levels of consciousness humanity has or will manifest from animal man to and through and beyond mastery are all present together side by side for the very first time not just in human history but planetary and solar history and the statement was made that this represents the most profound opportunity for our planetary logos in concert with this avatar of synthesis to realize more growth, more evolution, more initiation, more release of consciousness into its fullness within mm -hmm. the Christ that has ever been attempted ever. And so here we are in our humble assemblage, in our, our hewn out by our own hands, council chamber of elders in training. And I think we need to stand back and acknowledge in great uh, gratitude and beneficence our efforts to take on, even in our own consciousness, notwithstanding any actions we may take, to even wrap our minds around what we must deal with and resolve in short order, in <laughs> no time at all, um, these massive oh. challenges. Mm. Thank you, Deborah. Okay, it's late, so let us, um, yeah, just make uh, the announcements of Alexander and then close with a one minute of silence, just a moment of silence. And the next lab session will be on the 26th of September. Thank you everybody for this very deep inquiry. So, Alexandra, your announcements. Thank you, Uta. Thank you, friends. Um, very rich day today for us. Um, I want to invite us to continue holding this point of tension within our group and this full moon 2025 initiative organizes um, open forum open forum on the base of the meditation for the common good project which is an experimental platform for uh, the initiative and that's the space where we invite you to come to share on how we can create safe space for difficult conversations that's all the diversity of the opinions could be shared the same way as we share it today and how we can create the vertical alignment of the meditation free from uh, our individual's perspectives of what is true. 
So that will be happening on August 31st, uh, this Thursday. So we, uh, I want to invite you to come and uh, I will place the link into the uh, chat. And uh, also tomorrow in the lead to the full moon, we have our gathering in the garden. Um, please join. The link also will be available in the uh, chat. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you, everyone. Let's take one more breath with each other, just acknowledging what we're doing here. Okay, blessings everybody, bye bye.